Herzlich Willkommen zu einer kleinen Sonderfolge von Let's Play Life is Strange. Und äh, alles in allem kann man sagen, es geht in dieser Folge darum, wir lesen die restlichen Tagebucheinträge, die wir jetzt, ja, sagen wir mal, zum Ende der letzten Folge hin, nein, der vorletzten Folge hin, nicht machen konnten. Und zwar erst jetzt können, wo wir einiges so abgeändert haben, also einiges korrigiert haben. Einen Fehler korrigiert haben, dass wir noch mal dort sind, wo wir hingehören. Doch, äh, vom geschichtlichen Ablauf hier. Ach, schaut euch, <lacht> schaut euch die letzte Folge an. Ähm, okay. Hello, October 9. Dear Diary, I have the power to run time and I ended up on a rooftop trying to stop my friend from jumping off while trying to prevent the possible destruction of my hometown. I fell... I fell asleep at my desk and woke up reaching out to Rind or Crab Kate. I remember when my journal entries were about which anime character I wanted to be, or my dreams of being a respect, respected uh, globe hopping photographer, or what, uh, or what me and Chloe would be doing when we were finally adults. At least we know how, the, how that turned out so far. Chloe is determined to get the bottom of what's going on, so I've been playing. What would Chloe do? Which means blowing off my Blackwell homework to research everything I can find on Kate Marsh, Rachel Amber, and the, uh, and the est est esteemed Prescotts. It would be too easy, <laughs> too easy peasy if they were all connected, but at this point. I think the whole town of Acadia Bay is connected to this crazy shit. I can already see the story on the National Geographic channel. Mystic, scientific or apocalyptic, the Acadia Bay tornado. Shudder. Speaking of fear, I still think about Kate and, and the sadness in her eyes on that roof. I'm so grateful she's alive. I love seeing the students at Blackwell show their support for her with gifts and flower, flowers. Finally. So that's cool that I got Mr. Jefferson in trouble. Uh, and he won't be representing Blackwell at the Everyday Heroes contest. I don't blame him for what happened at Kate. Yes, he should have listened to her. But it's not fair he can't attend the event. Now the winner has to hang out with Principal Wells. I hope Victoria wins. But one of my heroes probably hates me. Yeah, Max. Leave it to Chloe to make me sneak out past a curfew, curfew and demand I meet her in front of the main building at, in the dead of the night. I know Chloe would be all over investigating the campus after what happened to Kate here. This just makes Chloe... Chloe more is desperate to find out what happened to Rachel, if anything. <laughs> it's funny that even though I think I can run just rewind myself out of trouble, I'm in more trouble now than ever before in my life. If this was a Twilight Zone, if this was a Twilight Zone story, I'd be getting set up for some serious irony. Looking like I'm going to run myself out of existence or, some, or, or something. Can I honestly say I'll have the, the, the ability of the rest of my life? Are the tornado, the snow and the eclipse just hallucinations or are they genuine prophecy? More importantly, more importantly is, the, is this a curse or blessing? Chloe is alive and by my side and that has to be a miracle which means There must be a way to stop the vision from coming through, right? So yes, I broke curview to hook up with Chloe. She said she had something to show me. Looks like it's time for some work, for some serious detective work. Enter the Blackwell Ninjas. As I stealthily made my way out of the whole hall, I passed by Kate's door and saw all the nice message from other students. Too bad most Blackwell didn't care when they passed around the video and bullied her to the proof. 
that to the roof. Everybody always cares when it's too late. At least Kate will see that people are on her side. Finally. I hope I can visit her when all this blows over. Maybe it's not a good choice of words. Watch. Nein, es war zu viel. Ja. Damit geht's jetzt weiter. Damn. Oh, that was too close. I was doing so well until I get outside. And, and of course, it was Principal Wells. Of all people blocking the way, the one person I, I least wanted to see. I wasn't ninja enough for him, so yeah, he busted me. But I finally got to see that the gossip was true for a change. Principal Wells was shit was shit faced. He didn't even try to hide it. In fact, he was a lot cooler drunk than sober. I can see why he's so confused dealing with Kate's family and the Prescotts and David Madsen. He still acts suspicious and gives me way too much cute, as he would say. Nobody says that seriously. But I can see that he's under a lot of pressure. So much that he's so wasted he can't even use his keys at midnight. Sure, he was in my way, but uh, he was no match for my run power. After all, I got to go and meet Chloe. Bad Max. Even though I thought it was I thought it was I was in full ninja mode, Chloe still scared the shit out of me, which pissed me off considering what I've been go going through. Sometimes she's damn intensive to other people feelings other people's feelings. She wants all my attention for her and finding Rachel and she gets all but her but hurt if I don't have time for her. Obviously I have time in hand, but I can't stay mad at her at her for long and she was so damn excited about having the keys to the remain building. And honestly, I was pretty amped up too. Even more so so when uh, we went to the front building and spied on Victoria's talking smack about about me, shocked and worse, actually trying to blackmail Mr. Jefferson to pick a photo for the Everyday Heroes contest, she is freaking unreal. I give Mr. Jefferson's Mr. Jefferson major respect for telling her to get lost, even though she deserved to be expelled for pulling that crap. This is her priority after what happened with Kate. I just don't understand Victoria, no matter how I try. She's already rich, pretty and a good photographer. Why to try so hard and, and hurt so many to mani manipulate everything already in your favor? I just hope that's not what I'm doing with my rant power. Yes, there's something incredible awesome about breaking into your own school at a witching hour. Although Chloe was techni uh, technically right, how can we break in with a key? Never mind that it was a st it was a stolen key from the school set of security. Anyway, the Blackwell Ninja strikes again. <laughs> so cool to st to stalk the halls when it's dark and quiet. Even with so with so many terrible things happened all around us, it felt like Chloe and I were go were walking towards the center of a great cosmic mystery, something bigger than any of us. But we kind of suck a master. Uh, master spy since we didn't have a key for the principal's office. No worries with with my rewind power at the hand. And of course Dr. Robin Graham. He came through with a bitchin' mini bomb of sodium what the fuck ever. I probably learned more putting those ingredients together than the entire semester so far. Sorry Mrs. Grant. Warren is the star student here. He tries so hard to help. Maybe too much but that's wrong with that uh, but what's wrong with that these days? I'm so grateful he's on my team. Uh, he's on my team. Talk about uh, being in the sancto sanctorum. Thanks, Latin class. I barely passed of Blackwell. I did feel freaking weird about being in the principal's office after midnight, going through his files and laptop with Chloe. She was way too into it. 
technical, uh, technically um, we could be arrested and thrown in jail. Yikes, I just pretend that we were on a very special episode of The Wizards of Waverly Place. You know, just a couple of wacky Sherlock's investigating is cool for a good cause. Entschuldigung. <sighs> yeah, that helped. Not just scan and all, but. While we didn't find the proof, we found Nathan's file had a weird drawing in it. Just uh, that just said Rachel in the dark room, over and over. <laughs> so that's a major clue that Nathan Nathan is involved in this somehow, or he's just insane. But his note also re re ref referenced David M, which means that we absolutely absolutely have to find a way into David's secret bunker files for a good cause. But Chloe just can't help herself, and she actually took five. Grant in cash marked in cash marked handicapped fund cause that's gonna that's gotta be like it emirati emirate i can think of a faster route to karma hell but it would clear chloe's debt to frank i'll find a way to make it up to the uh, to the fund after all saving a life of spirit a priority as is my habit with Chloe, no matter what our fates seem bound together, for better or worse, usually worse. Despite all this usual breaking in, in and blowing up of his hijinks, Chloe decided what, the, what we needed more than er anything was to take a night swim in the Otter Slayer. I was so uh, chilly and rebellious that I was like, oh yes, we shall swim. We didn't completely skinny dip, but close enough to get in, to get in big trouble, no matter what. I did. I don't know why she, why we were so careless after being so careful. I love that Chloe brings out the just don't give a fuck side of me, even if that hasn't always served her well. She deserved a moment of not giving a shit. Me too. Just two friends gooing around in the pool. I fear those youthful shenanigans might soon be a thing of our past. God, I'm starting to sound like one of the teachers at Blackwell. Chloe and I had a notice, had a nice chat about our lives since I left. We talked about dumb boys and girls and why they're trouble. Especially for me. I feel like a groupie when I talk to Chloe about our life experience. She has me so beat. She has me so beat. I take pictures, she take act she I take pictures, she take a takes action. Speaking of action, we had to serious bounce when security showed up. You I how quiet I, I, I how quiet could we be in the swimming pool? Plus after leaving a trail of our Blackwell handiwork. It was so intense and ex exciting to get past the security guards. They had serious spotlight power, so it was exactly easy to stealth our way past, especially as we had a bail in Chloe's, in Chloe's chunk, uh, uh, chunker. But like I said, intense and exciting. Hella like Chloe Price. Even though my body smelled like I had been in chlorine it was so nice to crash in Chloe's room and uh, for the first time in five years and wake up next to her like our old sleepovers for some reason I reminded me of the time where we were going to TP and one of the neighbors houses and we even sh uh, snuck out but got but got chicken and run back home laughing all the way I remember waking up next day and Joyce was making one of her delicious breakfast downstairs and Chloe smiled at me like we were the most secret club in the world. Or at least Acadia Bay. We were pirates, damn it. After our acad academic espionage uh, last night, I felt the same way. It's just like that uh, now the, st the stakes are much higher and much more dangerous. I even ended up in some of Rachel Amber's clothes, since mine was trashed. A, a, band, a, a bounty and 
ripped jeans, so not me. But I haven't found my style yet. So why not have fun, some fun experimenting with a new outfit? Speaking of experiments, Chloe dared me to kiss her. So I did. She probably thought <laughs> I'd was out. Why? It wasn't that big deal, though it was cute the way she was kind of embarrassed after she said she would tell Warren. Besides, I think Chloe sees Rachel Amber in her future. When I, want, uh, when I went down to breakfast, Joyce actually called me Rachel, which just seems so wrong considering how beautiful she is and how boring I am. I guess my new outfit really is working, it's magic. I ended up helping Joyce make breakfast just like when I was a kid on a sleepover. It's odd how quickly you can fall back into, into an old run a routine. <laughs> So I must have set off Joyce nostalgia mode since she busted out your old photo album. I am one of the few people who loves checking out old pictures. That was that Alfred Hitchcock line about film being pieces of me, like Mr. Jefferson said, so are photographs. I do think she wanted me to see her new husband in a better light. When David was happy or laughing with Joyce in a picture, I wanted to say and whose is that? Plus, I'm sure it's not. It's no accident that there was a photo of Rachel wearing the exact same clothes I had on. She truly is stunning and somehow looked more punk rock than Chloe. The truly heartbreaking image was the last photo William Price ever took. Chloe and I making pancakes in the kitchen. Joyce really misses that joyful, optimistic girl. I know she's still there when Chloe smiled at me this morning. I saw her. The picture seems to sum up everything we have we had as children and lo lost at, as adults. Whatever being an adult mean. Which was a perfect cue for Chloe to bounce into the room and start shit with Joyce. We gave this gave me cruel covers so I could sneak into the garage and finally unlock David Madsen's extreme files. So today I finally found out what was in David's secret files and I admit I expected it to be worse. I'm, re uh, I'm relieved <coughs> that it was, wasn't was so uh, maybe I'm going easier on him than, than I should. No surprise that he had detailed files on Kate and Rachel listing their whereabouts along with surveillance pics. David isn't off my shit list yet, but he's a damn good investigator. I'll give him that it's clear that Frank and Rachel had some kind of relationship and I don't think Chloe is going to be very happy to hear that. She needs to start waking up. We all do. When David came home, things escalated quickly. He looked, he looked more upset than usual, but shrugged when he saw me wearing Rachel's clothes. He was so on edge. Maybe I'll never get to see the David again. Uh, that Joyce loves so much. She and Chloe <laughs> again. This manchmal spielt das hinten verrückt. She and Chloe really let him have a level, really let him have it. Though this was the first time I saw, uh, I saw them bounce since we were kids. Suddenly, I couldn't take it any anymore either and I kind of blew up. It was like a turn that felt awesome. I've been wa I've been wanting to rip into David like that myself for a long time. I figured worst case scenario, hello rewind power. But I wanted Choice to know uh, the depths of his weird paranoia. She looked so sad and angry when I told her about the photos of Rachel and Kate, not to mention the home civilians. Choice kicked his ass out of the house to Chloe's glee. Despite David's ev evidence and the bracelet, Chloe refused to believe Rachel was involved with Frank. This is a part of Chloe. This is a part of Chloe I don't much like. She gets so damn petulant if she doesn't get uh, her way, or if she hears something she doesn't like. S like serious de denial. I get why, but that doesn't make dealing with an within any easier. So I threw my hands up and suggested we check out Frank's RV. 
I knew that would piss Chloe off and she would do anything to find out what kind of relationship he had with Rachel. But first we had to get the damn keys on the RV, which meant going into the two wet diner and bouncing like a rewind pin walter between Frank, Nathan, Prescott and Officer Barry and fucking with them all. With all of them. I'm still dizzy thinking about how I pulled it off. Yay for Max. Sometimes I feel like I'm just cheating at life. Ich auf, dass sie schon die ganze Zeit. Okay, nicht die ganze Zeit. Aber. Da schon die Wale malt? The first thing we had to do was to get Frank's scary dog out of the RV. So we did this classic cartoon, give a dog a bone routine and. Ucho became Scooby-Doo just like that. Frank's RV was pretty much what I expected, drug dealer trash chic. But it wasn't as a uh, serial killer as I, ref as I feared. We ransacked the place and found what Chloe didn't want, to want us to find. I'm sorry Chloe had to see the picture of Rachel posing for Frank, even if she did care about him. Uh, uh, about him to her. That to her, it's just another betrayal, just another loved one dumping on her. Everybody she ever loved, she lost one way or, not, or another. Only I came back from the past. For what? To make Chloe life, Chloe's life more painful? I just wish I could use my brain power to go all the way back to the days when we were covered in pan a pancake floor. Life was simply... Objective, I should examine the board. Okay. Enjoy the journey. October 10th, dear diary. Le let's never do the time warp again. I can't even begin to explain what happened. If I think too hard about the ramification, my brain m might melt. When I try to des describe it, it was... If I'm describing something that happened to someone else. Chloe was so upset when we discovered that Rachel had actually been involved with Frank Bowers. <sighs> with Frank Bowers and she she just blew up. I can never talk to her when she's like this and I just get so tired of having to walk on eggshells around her emotions. She still blames William for her messed up life. No matter how much she knows, she's being unfair. I can't they say that. Uh, I wouldn't be just a smash up. Not that I am not in my own way. I'm in in my room. All I could do think uh, all I could think was I wish I could go back in time and help Chloe. And suddenly I was looking at the photograph William had taken of us on the day he died, and it started pulsing like it was 3D, like I could see inside the photograph. Then I found myself actually back in the photo. When it when I was 13 years old, I was back in Chloe's kitchen in the year 2008. With Chloe and William. Right before he left to pick up choice for the last time, since my powers somehow morphed to this new level of rewind, I decided that there was no way I was going to let William die again. So I played hide the keys until he had no other option but to take the bus. I was so happy act I actually saved William, never thought about that could go wrong. I knew I was screwed up, I was screwed when I came out of my epic rewind and saw Victoria chase, but now she was my friend and I was a member of the Wartex Club, Nuff said. I knew I had screwed. I screwed up and then I felt sick thinking about what might have changed with Chloe. I had a clue when I saw David Madsen driving to sc driving the school bus. He sure didn't look so threatening anymore. I didn't want to know how he ended up as a bus driver instead of, cho instead of with choice. I felt my heart drop when I rushed to Chloe's house so when William opened the door I prepared myself for the worst. That's when Chloe rolled forward in her wheelchair, paralyzed from the neck down, 
I didn't even know what to say, so I covered my mouth in my typical gesture of shock and stupid. But Chloe's smiles, smile was so genuine and beautiful, I almost cried. I had a gist to everything without freaking out or telling Chloe that I've actually after that I actually aftered time and space to save her to save her father, but get in her car accidentally so she can never walk again. The thing is she was still Chloe, just minus all the rage. This Chloe was so was just grateful to be alive and have her family watching over her. Chloe begged me to spend the night and of course I did. I'd noticed how run down parts of their home were compared to before. I saw to the incredible expensive equipment that Chloe now requires including her new garage room. Sorry David. Even though I felt awful and disconnected, Chloe was just so bubbly and excited to hang out with me again, especially since I flagged on her pretty hardcore after her accident. Even in an alternative universe, I'm a shitty friend. Chloe's world would, uh, was so new and unique to me, especially her strength and kindness and pain. She needed a whole pharmacy to get through the, through the day. I didn't feel sorry for her. I felt in awe with her attitude. This Chloe didn't blame anybody for her conditions, even though she had a right. We strolled down the beach and saw the beach, beach whales that proved something bad was happening in both realities. And then Chloe asked me to put her to sleep. The accident left her body pretty much broken, her lungs stopped working properly and she was basically dying a slow, painful death. She also felt so guilty about her parents' sacrifice and dwindling income. She wasn't erratic or tortured about this request, just practical, which made me feel even more terrible for putting her in this situation. I agreed to help her simply because she explained that she wanted to have a choice for the last time in her life. How could I argue with that? Especially since I knew I screwed up the entire universe by making a simple decision and now uh, and knew I would have got back to go back eventually and accept the timeline that actually happened. So Chloe and I had one last movie night, watching Blade Runner, falling asleep to the sound of Vengeance. And when I woke up, I put my best friend to sleep. Forever. After my visit to Chloe, to Chloe's new world, I knew it was time to go, Max. Uh, to go to, it, it was time to go, Max, to the future. I had seen the rest of my temporal temp tempering, and I got scared, thinking my new power wouldn't even work anymore. That would have been cruel karma. Fortunately, I was able to project myself into the photograph once again, and undid everything I had done. Goodbye, William. Again. Hello, David. Again. So, es hat knapp eine halbe Stunde gedauert und ich würde sagen, in dieser halben Stunde machen wir Cut, hören auf, sehen uns dann doch erst wieder die nächste Woche. Ja, ich mache keine Sonderfolge und morgen um 20 Uhr oder heute um 20 Uhr, das wann auch immer, eine ganze Stunde. So nicht, dass eine halbe Stunde ist ja schon zusätzlich genug. Ich würde sagen, an dieser Stelle Cut. Die Episode, also Chapter 4, ist das sowieso in, in The Dark Room ähm, zweigeteilt. Eine Stunde diese Sache mit der, äh, ähm, sagen wir mal, parallelen Zeitlinie. Was wäre, wenn William überlebt hätte? Und die andere Sache ist ja die Zeitlinie, in der wir jetzt sind. Und wie wir jetzt wieder angekommen sind. Und damit machen wir nächste Woche Freitag weiter. Und dann machen wir einfach, ziehen wir es durch. Bis zumindest über zwei Tage bis zum Ende von Episode 4. Vielleicht schaffen wir auch sogar schon den Anfang von Episode 5. Mal schauen. Auf jeden Fall haben wir jetzt nur noch... Da haben wir jetzt nur noch den heutigen Tag in Game. So. Macht's gut. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Euer Replika 666.